him a cry? Not one. I promise. Hear me. Speak to me. Have mercy on me, for heaven's sake. Tell me what I've done. Oh, I didn't peach on you. I didn't do it. I swear it. Don't look at me that way. No, 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 no. For pity's sake, you're killing me. Oh, oh. Your hands. Take your hands away. I can't confess. For your own sake, for mine, stop before you spill my blood. I have been true to you. Upon my guilty soul, I have. All I said was... Who threw the overalls in Mrs. Clancy's chowder? Gregory, you pig, you... Well, I for the party. You really think that's funny? Clout calls the atmosphere. Well, well. How are all the merry little murderers? Hard at it, eh? <laughs> Just dripping gone. My idea of a jolly house party. Oh, he's just peeved because nobody will play his silly old ping pong with him. Sally was just reading us her last chapter. Really? Your last chapter? Sally, darling, can I depend on that? Say it again. Slower this time. Remember, I'm a weak woman. What ho? Call out the merry villagers. Let them be dancing in the streets. Let's revel because it's Sally's last chapter. No, darling. It's only my latest chapter, and I've contracts for two more books. Honey, do you mind telling me where we're going to fit in our wedding day? Between my next two novels, Death Walks in Darkness and Murder in the Morgue. Goody, goody, Grandma, and let's have corpse candles on the wedding cake. Speaking of weddings, Alonzo Smith used to drown his brides in a bathtub. You see, he would simply grab their feet like this. Ah! After this, I lock my bathroom door. Calm yourself, my own. I never slay my wives without just cause. Such as not screwing the cap on the toothpaste. My hero. <laughs> More like a friend than a husband to me. More like a dear old pal. Wind just too thrilling. It's just a sort of wild night when murders happen. Yeah. And what a perfect place for a murder. A little rock-bound island off a lonely coast. Pounding surf, a rising storm, an ancient mansion where the wind wails through the corridor. Is that in quotes, my dear? Why, anything could happen here. I just wish something would happen. Something nice and gruesome. Gee, but you're a cheery lot. Sally, will you console me? Sally, I was thinking about the solution of that story. Sixth nightly session of the Hawk Island Crime Club. Thomas Austin, well-known criminal lawyer, in the chair. <laughs> about the solution, I think your best out is to have the murderer confess. Do you think that's natural? Natural as the rest of your yarn, my love. Well, confession is the one way we have of escaping from ourselves. Two out of every three men would take that way, especially with the fear of death upon them. I'll remember that, Tom. Now, uh, how about this legal matter we were discussing? Well, let me see that script, and I'll tell you what the procedure is in the treaty parts. I don't know, Mr. Arthur. I say, where's Madeline? Tom. Tom. Madeline, where are you? You haven't strangled your wife and shoved her up the chimney, have you? Madeline's out on the beach. She said she had a bit of a headache. I wonder where's Misha. Maybe he's got a headache, too. Headaches are simply marvelous. You can commit a headache and uh, nobody can prove it. <laughs> Misha's in the music room, alone with his arm. Sure enough, a wizard. Oh, when I hear that man play, I could kiss him. Yeah. Well, kiss me and hear a symphony. Toi, mon vieux, tu t'embrasses bien des fois, mais t'es jamais une symphonie. Ah, la 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 la. 
and love. Mesa is just too fascinating. <laughs> oh, Tommy. Aren't you most afraid to trust your little wife from the... Oh, look out, oh, will I'm you? Now sorry. look what you did. I'm no choker off, Greg. This isn't the gay old night is. I don't question Madeline's friendship, since she doesn't question mine. Yes, to what comes after friendship. Love? No, alimony. Supper is served, sir. Oh, boy, I could eat my own grandmother. Not without potato salad. No, me for mine. Just stun it and drag it in. I could be happy with a simple hard-boiled egg. Hard-boiled egg, oh, you mean. Mr. Music Master, Goulash, Oshkosh, Macintosh, Maksnelovich. Go to the flesh for swine. I feed my soul. Swine, I like that. Oh, hurry up. I'm so hollow, I'm positively haunted. Swine. What did you call me? No, 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 my love. No, no, not you. No, but I've always said you were the biggest little frog that ever came out of Paris. Oh, I can say that in the trip, Sally, and I'll step upstairs and go over those legal points for you. Wait until after supper, Tom. Better get at it while it's still fresh in my mind. I don't mind doing it for you at all. What a worker that man is. Yeah, a fast worker. And what a bottle of eyewash you turned out to be. The perfect host. The ideal lover. Fat chance I get to make love to you when the first corpse comes along gets all your eggs. Corpses are very interesting. At least they don't take nasty wives for that. Don't be a pig, Paul. Give me some of that jelly. I never look at jelly, but I think of Mary Breaver and the boy that's How many loves? Five. Nobody's looking. Uh, here, Harriet. Have the second joint. Oh, I want a pickle. I want a pickle. I want to have some meat with my mustard. Did Aristotle undertake? Won't you have a sweet potato? Thank you. I prefer the bottle. What a salad. I'm going to climb right in with it. That guy mixed you. I ain't missing all this. Must be in love with his heart. Must be in love with something. Meow! Yeah. Oh, somebody else called me, sir. Don't call him. He's an artist. He just inhales his feet. Well, <laughs> that vulgar one. Missing all this. Missing my earmuffs. Oh, Where is Madeline? <laughs> now, don't bother your silly little head with you about Madeline. Itchkovich. 
has that certain something. It's tenderness. Poor Tom. He's missing everything. Don't you love his touch? His whole heart is in his place. It makes me feel just full of soul. in the dark, while we, we soar to the stars. Dog, I laugh at him. I laugh at him. Ah! Oh. My little rabbit, it's nothing but the wind. Someone was hiding there. Someone was hiding. But see, nobody is hiding here. Nobody is behind the screen. Stop it now, stop it! Ask the button, come in for the living room. You go on to supper. Every minute until I see you again. Well, there's thousands of years. It is my pleasure to play, and I give to my playing. I give till it hurts. Greg. My friend. Would you just give me another lump of sugar, Paul? Dearest lady. Uh, but where is our friend Tom? Not here? Tom went upstairs just before supper. not to come in. You know, it was on a night like this that those two women had their throats cut on the Isle of Shoals. You see, a sailor sneaked in on them. Sort of a wraith like us. <coughs> Don't get excited. It's just Rogers back from the mainland with the mail. I'd like a word with you, sir. Why will you, Rogers? Next regular meeting of the United Undertakers will be held in the morgue at midnight. <laughs> Fly to it, you crepe hangers. There's the mail, sir, over on the table. And uh, here's the key to the batteries in the launch. Well, what do I do with it? Wear it behind my ear? That there Russian piano player was saying he'd admire to put out in the teeth of a gale. There's a big storm breaking right now. And I don't aim, what with my rheumatism and all, to go cruising around looking for no drowned Russian. You stick that there key right in your pocket, Ain't nobody going to get off of this island unless you say so. Well, I'll say it's about time you blew in. I didn't have the gas they late. I've been out in the boathouse for hours waiting for the storm to blow over. It's only just beginning. If you're going upstairs, you better tell that husband of yours to come on down to supper. Oh. Wasn't Tom in there with you at supper? 
No, he's been up in his room for the last half hour. You know, you're an awful silly kid to take such chances with storms. Thank you, Greg. Guess I'll go right into supper. Hello, Madeline. Hello, Sally. Where's the mail, Greg? Well, aren't I mail enough? Even if that was good, I wouldn't like it. Tom wrote his secretary to send me the dope on the Blagden case. The Blagden case, you know, that's the poison candy affair. Same as in my novel. Don't bother, Greg. Jemiah Blagden used arsenic. But I think I'll use cyanide. Or maybe, uh, prussic acid. You'll do nothing of the kind. Why, Greg. See here, I'm fed up on this fiction murder racket. I asked you down here, well, what does a chap ask his fiance to a house party for? And all you do is talk death, disease, and disaster with Tom Austin. You can always go and play with your other guests. Like blazes, I can. They're all sitting around, pop-eyed with admiration, licking up your shop talk. <laughs> the Bullet in Adam's Apple by Sally Wayne. The Seven Shrieking Corpses by Sally Wayne. And you throwing out your chest as though you were Mrs. William Shakespeare. It's all very well for someone who has inherited a couple of million to sit around leading the mental life of an oyster and make wisecracks about people who hustle and work for a living. Just why did you ask me to marry you? Well, it wasn't because of your phony literary racket. If I'd wanted to fall in love with a writer, I'd have picked a real one. I didn't know you read. Yeah, I'd fall in love with Bernard Shaw, beard and all. And if I'd wanted to fall in love with money, I would have picked the Baron Rothschild. Well, he's dead. So are you, only he knows it. And what does your silly old money amount to anyway, unless you earn it yourself? And what do your silly books amount to? Do you really think you're important to anybody? Writing those Bing Bing dime novels, running around after a make-believe situation, like a kitten after a tail that isn't even there? Oh, very well. If I'm such a silly, senseless, no-account idiot as you think, in kindness to you, We'll call our engagement off. There you go again, mixing up fact and fiction. We can't be disengaged. We're in love with each other. Oh, ideally suited. And we're going to be married. And have five children. Ten. Daddy. And you're going to bust up that typewriter. I'm buying a dozen new ribbons for that typewriter, just as soon as I get off this island. And here's your ring. Our engagement's over. Feeny, caput. All washed up. Dear lady. Oh, Misha. Now, do be nice to Misha. He's going to play our wedding march. There isn't going to be any wedding. Oh, oh, such a discord. I will go and play some music to calm your, uh, what you call it, savage breast. Uh, uh, bosom. Uh, chest. Chest. Hold on a minute, Sally. Here's your script. You're simply wonderful, oh. Tom. I've jotted down all the cases I could think of that were solved by the criminal's confession. For instance, there's the Rygate Strangler. Three-fingered Jellison that killed the baby in the hen house. I remember that. Sophie Gebhardt, who strangled her victims with piano wire. And that old man, I, I forget his name, who was smothered in the clothes press. You're thinking of Daft Daddy Maxwell? No, no, that was the famous bathhouse case. Mm -hmm. I defended him in court. But I'll tell you all about it when we have supper. Oh, thanks, Tom. You're awfully sweet. All the rotten nerve. The over. What is it, Greg? Oh, nothing, nothing. What do you take me for? What's the matter, old man? You don't stand for everything? Yeah, wait a minute, let me. There you are. Thanks, Tom. Go on to the supper. Go with him, Sally. I'm going to have it out with Misha. Please. I hope Misha hasn't gotten into any more trouble. Greg must be sick of helping him out. Well, Misha's all right. We mustn't be too harsh in judging a genius. Oh, Tom, if you won't come to supper, supper comes to you. You live only to please me, don't you, dear? Where is dear Misha? What made him stop playing? <laughs> Doesn't that wind sound just like an organ? That reminds me of the case of the old organist in Wiesbaden. Yes? He disappeared one wintry night. And months afterwards, oh, 
many months <laughs> afterwards, yeah. they found him stuffed in the pipe of the cathedral organ. At least they found his head. Oh, oh Paul, that's terrible. Stop it, Paul, stop it. I have the strangest premonition. What? Let's go. Let's go. You and your rocking music. What can be happening? Why, this is here. Here. Oh, my heaven. 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 Oh
he isn't dead? Yes. We saw his body washed out to sea. You didn't do it, Greg. You couldn't have done it. Self-defense. I'll swear it was self-defense. No, it wasn't self-defense. I shot him because he wasn't fit to live. I shot him and threw his rotten body over the railing. Crazy. He's gone crazy. He'll kill us all. He'll kill us. Keep still. Greg, you're scaring these girls to death. Now, put that gun down. There's a good chap. Stop right there. What sort of sack do you take me for, boy? Oh, no, Tom, don't. Please. There's just one boat on this island. And the key to its battery is in my pocket. And there's just one gun on this island. And it's here in my hand. And if anyone thinks of taking it from me, let him think twice. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Collin has been murdered. Very good, sir. Get Rogers and that chap that helps him. Go down to the beach and search for the body. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. There's just a possibility it may be washed ashore. I'll go down hunt for Oh, the Tom. I want to go with you. <laughs> oh, What's to become of us? The Lord in the house was a murderer. Let nature protect you. Paul take care of you, won't you, Paul? Yeah, good old Paul. <laughs> Come on, Madeline. Get along upstairs and go to bed. Oh. Don't take it so hard, Madeline. After all, Misha was nothing to us. Come on, Madeline, dear. We'll all go up together. All together. And we'll keep the lights burning till morning. If we manage to live that long. Don't do that. Don't scream so loud, my darling. You might split your silly throat. Don't talk about throats. All together. I'm off. Come on. I'll be right with you, Tom. Good. You're a plucky girl, Sally. One girl in 10,000. I'm Greg's girl. He isn't worth it, honey. No? No, take it from me. I know the type. I haven't been a criminal lawyer all these years for nothing. He's an idler, soft with easy living. Every nerve in him gone sick. What a pal you are when a friend's in trouble. I'm your friend, Sally. And I know what you've got on your hands with this fellow. He's a murderer for the thrill of it. A weakling. Not fit so much as to touch your little finger. Are you trying to make love to me, Tom? You're the kind of woman a man dreams about. And to find you tied up with this rotter... I'm glad you warned me. I won't forget. Let's go. Let's go.
there. Night like this? Roger, sit me off. Tom ordered him to stay in the launch. So you can't get off the island until the police come for you. Tom did that? Get into your warmest things and be quick about it. I'll go myself and change. What for? You don't suppose I'd let you go alone, do you? But Sally, darling, I'm a murderer. You're the man I love, Greg. Whatever you've done, whatever you are. Dearest. <laughs> Sally, darling. <laughs> darling. I wish you could have seen your face when I came in that window tonight and said I'd kill Misha. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Darling, don't you know that there has to be a corpse before you can prove there's been a murder? But I saw Misha's body there on the rock. <laughs> you saw Misha's bolster and an old suit of dress clothes. Greg! You mean you didn't kill him? For Pete's sake, why should I drill a hole through my best friend? But you quarreled. <sighs> what about, Philo Van? Why didn't you ask me? What about? Hanged if I'd known what to tell you. Oh. Sweetheart, you had it coming to you. You and your amateur crime cronies. I just had to show you how you'd go running in circles if you met up with the real thing. Then it was all fate. Misha and I cooked it up between us. The quarrel and the fake corpse that scream in the dark. <laughs> and did you bite? Oh, baby. And you went to all this trouble just to prove that I'm a fool? Oh, darling, no. Just to prove that the best place for your typewriter is down the drain. And the best place for you is... Let me alone. Oh, look here, Sally. Oh. I came into this room, loving you so much. I would have gone away with you even though you were a murderer. I almost wish you were. Oh, come now, Sally. And here's your ring. For keeps this time. Oh, be a sport. A fine pair of sports you and Misha were. Fighting the girls to death. Breaking Madeline's heart. Of all the cruel, cruel... Stupid, idiotic, small boy monkey tricks that ever were pulled. This is the smallest and the vilest. And I never want to see your face again. Oh. Darling, 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 please, it was only a joke. A fine joke, you'll find it when you come to explain it to the others. And I won't do one bit of your explaining. Not one little word. Oh, come now, Sally, please. Gee, I didn't think you'd take it this way. Where's your sense of humor? Sally! Sally, darling! What do you know about that? You darn fool. Oh, it's you. Well, I'll cut out the hocus pocus. Gregory, my friend, you crush me. <laughs> Crushed? Hey, listen, I'm so flat I could walk under a snake's belly with a high hat on and an umbrella in my hand. And you've got to come to life again. Right now, too. But if I have to come alive so quick, what for did I die? What for? <laughs> Because I was a nitwit, a dumb, dizzy daisy. 
And of all the cruel, crude, stupid, beastly. And I never want to see your face again. My face? No, my face. Oh, your face. Ow! You are distressed. I'm punctured. <laughs> Darn gun almost ran through me. Come on now, cut it out, you grinning Zadie. <laughs> You've got to give this gag away. But Gregory, my friend, I cannot stop being a ghost until I have met once with Tom. It's all up, I tell you. We've got to cut it out. We've had enough of scaring women. You misunderstand. I haunt nobody but Tom. And you should have heard him just now run you down to Sally. Uh, weakling, criminal, sweet names he called you. Oh, he did, did he? <laughs> just a good pal. Go ahead and haunt him. Haunt him proper. Make him squeal. Never did like that, geezer. My friend, I see you at breakfast. Yeah, show up with a smiling face. <laughs> and seaweed in your hair. They'll probably have our heart's blood. I will be there with a smiling face and the seaweed in my hair. Good night, little ghosty. Good night, Greggy, my friend. believe in ghosts, oh. especially when I stumble over that dummy that you boys left for it. Clever little hoax that. So, Rogers and you have found my poor sacrifice suit of clothes? No, not Rogers and me, just me. Or rather, just I, if you prefer your English straight. At any rate, I was alone when I found the dummy, so I hid it carefully and called the hunt off for tonight. I wouldn't spoil your little joke prematurely. frozen hunting your corpse that wasn't there. Would you mind getting me a little nip of something on it? Certainly. It makes me so happy to do something for you, Tom. Why, I even go out and hunt myself. Gladly, if ever you be caught. Well, I hope you hunt on a warmer night than this. Wonder it thunders so. The lightning was terrific. <clears throat> you should have been out there. It's a great relief, my friend. You take so well our little job. Oh, I can take a joke. I can pull one myself, if necessary. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Monsieur. Well, here's to that uh, corpse hunt you boys have in the morning. That is, if you haven't given the game away, you haven't told anyone, have you? Not yet. Nobody has seen me alive since my so tragic death, except Greg. I make dramatic appearance at breakfast with seaweed in my hair. Congratulations. Perfect. Every little detail carefully thought out. Motive for murder well established by that quarrel before witnesses and those threats. And you're a good actor, Misha. Good? My dear chap, I'm great. Hmm. There's Greg's confession before witnesses. Perfect. Perfect. Now, you're really very clever. I will say what you Americans call hot. Yeah, hot. Everybody tell me that. Yes, yeah, so hot that, uh... You know, Misha, if anything should happen to you tonight, Gregory would go to the chair for your murder. <laughs> nifty little idea. Yes, nifty. Suppose someone had a grudge against you, Misha. But is it possible? Everybody loved me. And at the same time, had a yen for Sally. Oh, to have a yen for Sally, that's easy. What a chance for that person to bump you off, let Gregory go to the chair and leave Sally free. Satisfying love and hate all in one crack, eh? <laughs> uh, 
You must give that uh, to Sally for the plot of her next horror story. Well, I guess I go up to bed. Uh, wait. Huh? I said, uh, wait, monsieur. What have you got there? That's Greg's gun. That should cinch the case against Greg. You have a grudge against me, Tom, old man? I was in the music room tonight when you were with my wife. So? Fair enough. You love Sally, and Madeleine, she loves me. But my wife is my wife. And no man has the right to laugh at me. I do not laugh at you, Tom. But you did. Why don't you laugh now? Well, I will not see Madeleine again. Come now. You would not kill. Me? Oh, indeed, though. No. I wouldn't kill you. Greg killed you. Greg is going to die for killing you. But you are crazy, man. Don't raise your voice. But you see, you shoot the whole house here. You'll never hear anything over that thunder. And the only thing that'll force my hand is for you to open your mouth. Now pray. And wait for that next clap of thunder. Well, Lulu, as long as you're up, slip me a teeny weeny sausage or two. Better make it three. I've simply got to tempt my appetite. If you knew how my heart is beating. It isn't your heart. It's your arteries hardening. Your great trouble is you have only one stomach. Better go slow. You've had the last of my digestive tablets. Hello, everybody. Hello, Paulus. Morning, Paulus. Where have you been, I'd like to know? Up along the beach. Cheerful sort of morning. Cheerful sort of party. Reminds me of the doomed breakfast table. When Lizzie Privislaw poisoned all her family with ant paste. <laughs> there, now they've got it. <laughs> come, my, come. You'll break something. Oh, my fluttering heart. If I ever get through this day. Mm. If you can get through that breakfast, you can get through anything. Hello, everybody. Hello there. Good Good morning, dear. Oh. Unhand that tumbler. My need is greater than thine, old thing. You'll drown. Ah. How about a little drink, my friend? Thanks. I never touch a thing. How is that? How'd you like to cut yourself a nice little slice of throat? Stop it, will you? Here we are, all sitting in the very shadow of death with that bloodthirsty maniac upstairs. Please. And this has gone far enough. 
I'm going to tell you all. Well, I'll be. Well, good morning, said he. I represent the Merry Murderers Weekly. Oh, so you're not interested in my fancy needlework? <laughs> well, perhaps you'd like to see my new line of canned peaches. I put them up myself. No? Dear me. Bill, you're not yourself this bright and beautiful morning. Who are you? <coughs> not a word, old man. Not a word. Of course I remember you. You're Sherlock Holmes, demon sleuth of Baker Street. How is Mrs. Holmes? I trust that little rash is all cleared up on her chest. Just a popular favorite. <laughs> Have some breakfast, Gray. Thanks, old man. Don't mind if I do. What for breakfast? Oh, say it ain't true. Innocent little eggs looking up at me with their big yellow eyes saying, Daddy, eat me. Oh. Patience, little eggs. Patience. Mm, and all smothered in cream. Red, how can you? The condemned man ate a hearty breakfast. Kitties and bacon, sausages. Sally, aren't you going to pour me a nice cup of coffee with your own beautiful hands? Not if I know myself. If you think I'm going to sit at the same table with you, go, go. Better taste you stay in your own room. Well, what do all you merry little murderers want? I know. We'll have him good old Misha, fresh from his watery grave. Oh, I'll never forgive you. Never, never. You're crazy. Well, he said he dropped in on us after breakfast with seaweed in his head. If he isn't here now. Well, well. Come on in, Misha. Show them what a glory villain I am. Oh! All right, bro. Oh. Washed him in, sir, right under the veranda. It wasn't so. It can't be so. He was alive. I left him alive. He must have fallen off the rocks. That's it. He must have been drowned. Shot clean through the head. Clean as a whistle. Do it. I left him alive. Alive. There in the living room. Hours after I told you that fool story about killing him. I never killed Misha. It was all a crazy stunt we cooked up between us. A stupid hoax. It was a gag, see? A gag. But just because you were all so thrilled with murders, we wanted to trick you. It was just a gag. Misha's my friend. My very best friend. I loved him. Everybody loved him. He was my pal. Trying to back out on your own confession. Well, I'm afraid it won't wash. Well, I tell you. It's true what he's telling you. Oh, Sally, darling, you believe me. It's a hoax. He told me so last night. And did you yourself see Misha alive after he confessed killing him? No, but Greg told me. Oh, and of course you believed it. Well, uh... it's the truth. I tell you, it's the truth. Now, Listen easy. To me, please. Easy, Greg. Now, easy. You got my gun. The gun. That's it. The gun will prove it. It was only one shot. Wait. Now hold on there. Come on, Harry. Harry. Well, Misha. 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 Madeline. Misha. Madeline. You mustn't. Please. No. Please. Come on over here. Misha, darling. You can't look at it. Misha. Oh. <laughs> Here, I tell you. Here on this table. I left the gun here. I was talking to Misha, and I put the gun on the table. It's been taken away. Somebody's taken my gun and shot Misha with it. That's possible, Tom. 
Don't you see it's possible? It's much more possible that he hid the gun himself. What? It's a damning piece of evidence against him. Come on, Greg. Now, where'd you hide it? I never hid it. Oh, come, come now. What do you think we are? You shot me, sir. You know you shot me, sir. No, no, I didn't. But we heard your shot. We saw the body. It was a dummy. I tell you, nothing but a dummy. Then where's that dummy? There isn't any. You're trying to lie to us. I didn't kill him. We all heard your confession. Don't try to back out on it now. You killed him. I tell you, I didn't. You shot him. You looked your friend in the face and shot him down like a dog. I didn't. I didn't. Don't lie to me. We're going to get the truth out of you. You killed Misha. I didn't, I tell you. You dare tell me that? Sitting on the very couch, where, in, in the very house where he died? Why, well, you treacherous lying criminal, you murderous moron. Killing for the kick of it. Shooting your best friend, your best friend for the thrill of it. Well, you'll get a thrill out of this. You're going to chair for this. Oh, shucks. Now stop writing him, Tom. Haven't you any mercy? Yes, for poor Misha. But not for the man that killed him. I didn't, I tell you. Now hold your tongue, Greg. He's not the district attorney. You stuffed shirt. Now sit tight. I'll get you a drink. I'm running this affair, Paul. You get in my hair. Keep out of here, Barker. Very good, sir. But I take my orders from Mr. Gregory, sir. Coffee, sir, will do you good. That's the second time within 15 minutes. You do that again, and I'm going to pop you right square in your nose. My need is greater than thine, old man. We must rig up some way to get in touch with the mainland and bring in the police. The most efficient, Tom. Couldn't do better if I was your worst enemy. Thanks, Barker. No more coffee. I'll toddle upstairs and pack my going away bag. That's the procedure, I believe. Here you are, old sock. Give it to Tom. The more of my liquor he drinks, the better he can devil me. You believe me, Paul, don't you? Listen, Greg. You're my friend first, whatever else you may be. Thanks. But you don't believe me. Doesn't anybody believe me? Sally. Don't do that. Look at me. Buck up, old dear. Don't touch me. Sally, for pity's sake. No, 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 I tell you. No. Don't let him touch me. Don't let him come near me. Sally. Now let her alone, Vic. Now right, pull yourself together, dear. There. Oh, I loved him so. I let myself love him. I'm all soiled with it. I'm degraded. Oh. What's to become of me? What's to become of me? Oh. Sally, Sally, please. Oh. There, 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 dear. He isn't worth it. I know, I know. I knew all along. But I didn't have sense enough to listen to you. Oh, there, 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 Sally, dear. I was too proud. I should have known all along. Sally! Sally! Oh. Thank you, Tom, dear, for all that might... for all I pushed aside. Oh. Sally, Sally! Oh. Stop her. Now let her go. Let her cry it out.
Sally. Sally, dear. Sally. Sally, dear. It's all right, Tom. Please go away. Not me. Come on out. Oh, let me alone. I'll give you two minutes and I'm coming in to fetch you. Now, be a good girl now. All right. I'd, I'd like to see you, Tom. Something to, to tell you. Be long now. I'm just bathing my eyes. It was awfully sweet of you to come up, Tom. I was just getting ready to go away. That's always a lonely sort of time, isn't it? Where are you going? Oh, a long way. Well, wherever you go, I'm going with you. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, Sally, Sally, do you know I'm crazy about you? Poor Tom. Dear Tom. Sally, ever since I first laid eyes on you, I, I've been mad to hold you in my arms like Please, you. please. Now kiss me, Sally. You know you love me. It's all too late. Too late. Too late? No such word in my vocabulary. I'm not a weakling like Greg. What I want, I go after, and I pretty generally get it. You're a man, Tom. I'm your man, Sally. If I'd only known. Oh, I've made such a wreck of my life. Well, we'll pick up the pieces together. No, no, I'm through, I tell you. Through. How does one write a will, Tom? Hmm? It's legal if it's all in handwriting without a witness, isn't it? What's all this junk about a will? You've got too much sense to. Please. It was awfully sweet of you to come up here. Seeing you has given me courage. But won't you run along downstairs now? Don't you see I want to rest? There'll be no nonsense about suicide. You're going to live, you understand? You're going to live for me. Oh, please. And you're going to forget all about Greg. I'm going to make you forget all about him. Yes, I'm going to forget him all right but in my own way. Well, I've loved you too long, Sally. I've been through too much for you, but, but you're worth it to me. You'll make it up to him, and I want you to forget him. Oh, let me go. I want to forget everything. I had too much, I'm sorry, but don't talk nonsense. I want you to forget everything. Here's to forgetting everything. What was, what might have been. Drank this. I did this rotten whiskey. You drank. Oh. Well, what, what's the matter? Well, what is it? Oh, what? I mixed it for myself. Poison. 
You drank poison. Poison. Study. What does he take? Phelan. It was Phelan. What? Uh, yes. He's done for. Oh, oh, I delighted. mixed it for myself. Sure to kill. I mixed it for myself. Get an antidote quickly. Oh, there isn't any antidote. Not here. There's nothing. No. Here. What have I done? What have I done? Oh. Can't let me die. Water. Water. Hurry. Water. Some water. Some water. Have me that water, water Barker. Uh, here you are, sir. Well, study, Tom, old man. Yeah, study. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Greg. I... No, you can't let me die. I want Madeline. 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 Hurry. Hey, Madeline. Right here, Tom. Uh, oh, 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 what have I done? Oh, there, Tommy. Madeline. I'm going to die and I want to die clean. I I killed me, sure. I killed him. What? Well, the ornery cut. No! Get every word. I killed him last night with Greg's gun. Last night in the living room. Greg's joke gave me the idea. If I kill him, I can prove it. With Greg's gun, I can prove it. Listen to this. Listen, listen. Where's that gun? Uh, where did you chuck it, you skunk? I threw it under Greg's window in the bushes. Oh, I know them bushes. Greg's innocent. Greg's innocent, now I can die. Come out of that. You're not dying. Why, Sally? What? what do you mean? There yes. wasn't one drop of poison in that drink. What? Not one drop. What's what? that? Poison? It was Sominol, a sedative. A good stiff dose, plus your imagination. Understand? Just enough to make you good and sick. But that's all. You're not dying. No poison? A trick? What'd I say? What'd I say? You said a plenty. And we all heard you. And we'll swear to it. I'll Quite say so we will. Blaming it all on Greg? No. Come on. Come on up. Get up here, Tom. Get up. You're well enough to go where you were aiming to send Greg. Oh, let me along. Give me a drink, Barker. They've got me licked. Did you ever hear of such a thing? I always suspected Tom. Sally, how did you ever get wise? I opened Misha's clenched hand. I made myself do it. And inside, I found this button. Yes, and I saw her take it out in his hand. So did this fellow's wife. What about the button? Where'd it come from? Well, buttons don't grow on rocks. So I knew that Misha wasn't murdered outside the house, as Greg told us in his fake confession, but inside. Mm. This button came off the couch in the living room. I looked and saw where it had been freshly pulled off. So it was on that couch that Misha died, and the man who knew he died there must have been his murderer. Tom knew it. What do you mean? He told us this morning, when he had you there on the couch, giving you the third degree. Don't you remember? You dare to tell me that? He shouted at you, sitting on the very couch where? Well, I'll be. He caught himself up quick and changed to the very houseware. But he said couch first. Mm -hmm. Tom knew where Misha died. So I knew that Tom was Misha's murderer. Darling, why didn't you say so before? A button, a slip of the tongue. What's that against your own confession? I had to make Tom confess. To save your silly neck. What caused you to think that he would? He told us himself last night. Not many men would care to shuffle off with a guilty secret in his heart. Remember? Mm -hmm. And Madeline told us that he confessed to everything the time he had the flu and thought he was going to die. So I tried putting the fear of death into him. And it worked. Well, how did you think that fast? I learned the trick writing thrillers. Dime novels. 
trash. I give in. I don't deserve you in a thousand years. Come here. Wonderful, beautiful Sally. Detect all you want. And I hope all our ten children are detectives.